Let, there are two more. I'm going to go. We'll go a few minutes late because there are two more questions I want to. I want to get to just uh, and the last one, perhaps the most important. But Neil, I want. There were a bunch of questions that had to do with science fiction, but but please discuss speculative fiction and its role in expanding interest in or knowledge of science in general. Let me just ask a question. How many scientists here read science fiction when they were growing up? You didn't? A little bit. A little, put your hand up. Make it sound good. Okay, good. There we go. For me, I'm of a certain age. For me, it was Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. And the thing about Star Trek... I can't argue with that. Well, it's, I mean, there's technology. They, everybody speaks the same language, generally, and they beam up and down, which is a huge shortcut, but it was... <laughs> This intensely optimistic view of exactly. the Exactly. And so what I what I'd like you to do, uh, science fiction guy of now, of the mm. future, is uh, I tell you guys, if you want to worry about things, we are living at a great time. I mean, we've got <laughs> this worldwide economic crisis, we've got uh, human immunodeficiency virus, we've got uh, all kinds of diseases that are resistant to our things we have. What used to be one and a half billion people, now it's going to be 12 or 15 billion people. And really, you, everybody here, climate change is the thing. But what if we had an optimistic view of the future where we come up with new technologies, new uh, social structures, where people get along and address climate change and improve the quality of life for everybody? I would love to have that. Yeah. Well, just before, you, as a tribute to my mother, uh, the key to this, the start of this, is to educate women. And yeah. this is how you... Uh, half, half of the humans are women, are female, because there's some people that are younger. Uh, half, of the, half of the humans are female, so half the scientists should be female. And that would be empowering. And I think it uh, gives us the possibility, if you have now suddenly, not suddenly, or in a few decades, have twice as many brains on the problem, we could, dare I say it, change the world. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that I've, I've actually learned a lot of science from reading science fiction. Um, I, I think I first came to understand information theory through reading science fiction. Uh, the point about... Um, scientific discoveries being made independently in different places at the same time as though there's sort of something in the air. The idea that there are deep problems which, um, uh, which we, we, we may be ill-equipped to solve, but which are... Maybe that the, the scientists of 500 years hence uh, will solve. Um, the idea that it's arbitrary what form information comes into the brain, whether it comes in through the eyes or the ears, it's still al it, it's always neurons that finally do it, and so it's a, there's a kind of arbitrariness about the nature of the, of the scientific medium. All these things which I regard as part of my scientific equipment, I got from reading uh, science fiction. And I think um, that, that, that optimism you talk about is really important. I think it really was what, uh, I mean, one of the things that kept Star Trek going, for example, the, the idea that that science, often, too often, it seems to me, in, in met science fiction, there's a dystopic view of the future that science makes the world a worse place. But science has made the world a much better place. People live much happier lives, healthier lives on the whole, and much longer because of science. And, and, and so that optimistic view is, I think, incredibly important to, to, to push, which is um, how I'm going to almost end this now, because I think we've gone over time. There is one thing that you pointed out, and, and there were some some um, questions about this, and I think I want to address it directly, which is um, the, the fact that there weren't more women on this panel. Uh, and, and, and it's an... And I, I, I was at the Nobel Prize ceremonies a few years ago, and, um, and they addressed the fact that um, there weren't more women Nobel laureates. And what they said was, it's, it's, it's a fact that because of societal issues, that women weren't encouraged to go into science, and the Nobel Prizes are given most often for things that have done 20 years earlier, 50 years earlier, and in 50 years from now, half the Nobel Prizes will be for women because there are women in science. And I'm hoping that events like this, we are the old guard for the most of us, you, even you. Um, and, 
And I'm hoping and, and that we will encourage young women to go into science and go into communicating about science and, the, and so that when we have this panel in the, in the future, it, it, we'll have an all-female all panel. But thank you very much tonight for coming.